My dear friends, in just a few weeks, we will begin using a new translation of the Mass. It is not just for the United States, but for the whole English-speaking world. This is of supreme importance because, as the Second Vatican Council taught, the Most Holy Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. Everything connected with the Mass, its prayers, music, gestures, even its architectural and artistic settings, are part of who we are as Catholics and are meant to nourish, teach, inspire, challenge, and console us. Having grown accustomed to the English translation after the Council, some people ask, why a new translation? What is the reason for this change? These are very legitimate questions. First, we have to remember that in the 2,000 years of Christianity, 40 or 50 years is not a long time. When the Council's reforms were implemented in their present form at the end of the 1960s, it was always envisioned that with time and experience, further refinements would be made. The new translation represents one such refinement. The translation we currently use is not wrong, but reflection and study have led to the conclusion that the translation could be much better, and we should always strive for the very best when it comes to our worship of God. So when you hear the new translation at the end of November, don't expect to be startled. It's still the same Mass that you are accustomed to in English, but a translation has been improved and enriched. Let me give you just a few examples. I think most would agree that references to the Bible are very important for our worship of God. The new translation has restored a number of biblical references, phrases, and vocabulary that were glossed over in what we currently use. At communion time, we now say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The original Latin, however, is biblical. It is a direct quote from the gospel accounts of the Roman centurion who begged Jesus to heal his sick servant. This pagan Roman had such great faith and humility that he said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. The new translation of the Mass restores this gospel reference by having us say, as the Latin does, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Another example is in the area of doctrine. Many people today downplay or even dismiss the importance of doctrine, but the profession of articles of faith has always been an essential part of Christianity. Christian baptism is only conferred after a person or his or her parents and godparents make a doctrinal profession of faith, especially in the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity. Jesus asked St. Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter was blessed by Jesus for answering correctly, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. For two millennia, the Church, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has clarified what this means in answer to all the questions that are raised. In the Nicene Creed at Mass, right now we say that Christ is one in being with the Father. This is not a good translation of what the Ecumenical Council of Nicaea defined as doctrine in the year 325. In Latin, the precise terminology is consubstantialem patri, which the new translation accurately renders as consubstantial with the Father. Now you may say, Bishop, this is a mystery of the faith that I don't really understand. In answer, I can only assure you that with fuller biblical and theological study, you would understand it better and appreciate its great significance for our faith. Ultimately, it is a mystery expressed in human language, but it is important that what the church believes be proclaimed accurately 
as it has been handed down to us. Maybe you've heard the joke about the priest who, as Mass begins, says, there's something wrong with this microphone. And all the people answer, and also with you. After 40 years of the English Mass, let's be honest. We could all benefit by taking a fresh look at what we say, sometimes almost automatically. As your bishop, I would encourage you to take some time to study and reflect on the meaning behind the words of the Mass, and not just the new words. There are many good resources out there explaining both the reasons for the new translation and the meaning behind such expressions as, and with your spirit. Our diocesan website offers a special icon devoted exclusively to video clips, notices, and articles on the Roman Missal that I hope you will find helpful. Another good resource is found in your local parish, your priests, pastoral leaders, and parish staffs. Over the past year, there have been a number of diocesan-wide conferences and meetings on the new translation for clergy, educators, and musicians. And I know that they are well prepared to answer your questions. I'm also very happy that the diocese, thanks to some grants and to your donations to the Catholic Annual Appeal, was able to provide all parishes with printed mass cards to aid in implementing the new translation. Like anything new involving a large number of people, there will be some rough spots at first. Priests will need to be patient with their people and people with their priests. I am confident that with patience, perseverance, and a little good humor, we will all rise to the challenge and be strengthened in our faith and in our worship of God. My hope and my prayer is that the new translation be, will be a way for all of us to deepen our understanding and participation at Mass so that together we can be better witnesses to our Lord Jesus Christ in the world of today. Thank you, and may God bless you.